Welcome back everybody to our three heart challenge of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In the last segment we just finished up the Dodongo's Cavern and we were told by Darunia that we best head up the mountain, the very dangerous active volcano mountain with no shield, all in order to find the magic of the great fairy. Will it be worth it? Let's hope so. Jeez, Link, that sounded like it hurt. You alright? Don't want to take a break or anything? Guess not. Let's go ahead and chuck bombs. What is with my timing throwing these damn things? Never hit it on time. As I say, as I hit it right on time. Sure, I'm glad I filled out all my rupees. I was really worried about that. Now, going up this mountain is a tad dangerous for more reasons than the obvious. Uh, the obvious one here being that, yeah, I don't want to get hit with rocks just yet. I've never quite figured out how to do this. Um, I'm going to try walking backwards. Because if you just walk straight up, rocks will fall on you wherever you go. And the idea here is that you have the Hillian shield so you can just cover yourself up when they fall and try to hit you. And that went astonishingly well. How about that? <laughs> okay. Now we would just climb right up, except these guys will totally try to knock us back down if we do. There should be uh, an enemy that jumps down at us when we get a little higher up. I think? I don't hear him up there. Just another Sculptula. See, it should be right up on this ledge up here, which is why I was a bit hesitant to go ahead and go up, but... And I guess he wasn't there. Lucky for us. So we get to the top of the mountain, and... oh god. Oh, we don't have to talk to him? What a nice change of pace. So, let's just bomb this very unsuspicious door and go inside. And now for something completely different, more or less. Yeah, once again we have to play the lullaby at ridiculous speed. The fairy should just knock him out until you play it the right way. That would be a lot funnier. And it would suck a little bit. God. What is... What can you say about a character like this? I have checked many lists of what I consider to be the least sexy video game characters in existence. And amazingly, this abomination of a fairy, quote unquote, is not on there. But she's so... I mean, there are no jiggle physics, thankfully. But her, ugh, the way she's dressed, the too much makeup, the gross-looking, shiny, three-tentacled hair, the, ugh, the way it sounds when when she sque screams like a banshee, and that very unsexy giggle. I just, ugh. I don't get it myself. And of course there's Rule 34 to think of. <sighs> yeah, now you're thinking about it too, aren't you? Don't search it. I haven't. I don't ever plan on doing it. I don't even know what horrors we would find. <sighs> Fine, I guess I'll talk to you now. Come on. The one time I want to talk to you and you won't let me. I, I don't get his dialogue here in this segment. Looks like you've grown up a little down the mountain. I was in there for like, not even three seconds. Well, more like a whole minute. Anyway, flying time! I totally crashed my legs onto the rock as he flew. 
Oh god, not again. Oh god, I'm bleeding! Oh, you scraped my legs against the bottom of the rock. Please be more careful. Oh god, oh, I'm backing off the side. No, that doesn't actually happen. But he is kind enough to drop us off on the roof. Dick. God, what good is he? Not at all, that's the proper question. Thankfully, we're done with the city of assholes for now. Let's just slice a cuckoo and be on our way. Cucko, cuckoo. Tomato, potato, potato, tomato. I don't know how it's pronounced properly. Zelda, to me, always seems to be filled with those words that there are, could be a hundred different pronunciations on, and nobody can say that it's wrong, because nobody knows exactly what it's supposed to be. I'm sure you could probably look it up on Zeldapedia or whatever, but... Still, the, the biggest one that was always brought up is Deku, or Deku, or Deku, or anything like that. And hey, we really, really, really didn't miss you this time. Bigger and stronger already? What the hell are you talking about? Sora's domain. I was... you battered and bruised me as you were bringing me down the damn mountain. And you're talking too slowly again. Well, thankfully that one wasn't too long-winded. Principle of the matter, though, I say. So, yeah, good thing we got bombs, or else we totally wouldn't be able to get past these rocks here. And here's a little something I wish we could do, but can't. The magic bean salesman who's eating his product. Can't talk to him. Because that would make the game easy. And this is a challenge. And challenges including flying with cuckoos. don't remember if you absolutely need them. I don't think as a young kid you can jump that distance. As an adult you can though, so I I know that they have the, the sprout, the bean that you can plant, and then it will be a f levitating flower. When time passes, but at the same time, why would you if once you're an adult you can already jump over the gap that you previously couldn't? But whatever. I mean, true enough, it does, like, fly you all the way over to somewhere around here, and that's a big time saver. Octorok's totally ignoring every single one of you, because you're annoying. They'll get a lot more annoying later. Spoiler alert. Hang on, everybody knows who I'm sorry, though. <clears throat> so here we are at a waterfall that for some reason is inaccessible, and... God, I totally messed that up. See, that's why they need to... Okay. There. When you play it at tempo, you never miss it. I mean, that was just my... Stupid fat fingers missing the notes. Sometimes I think I hit notes though, and it tells me I don't. All I have um, that I'm playing on right now is my wave bird. And now soothing music. It's pretty, I suppose. Zora race always struck me as odd because they're a very proud race as we find out just by talking to some of the NPCs if you can but they're like oh we don't need your help or whatever some of them are but some of them are really nice and some of them are really fat yeah I can tell you're so worried by all the ellipses oh my dear sweet princess Rugo where is she gone I'm so worried but enough of that. We have to play the diving game. Okay! Yeah, we pay rupees to get rupees that God knows we'll never use. Start! In the voice of the Mario Party game announcer. 
you know, I've been given a lot of crap about rupees in this game, you know, oh, we have them all but we'll never use them. And it is always that way, but knowing me, eventually I'll get to a point where I'll be like, God, I'm glad I had all these rupees. Can't just throw it down to me? Maybe track all the way back up there? Dick. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Princess Ruto. I can tell he's really concerned about her. He's a lot like the king in... What was the name of that game that had the, the, the king who, who loved to eat? It was some really crappily done game that everybody swore was done by the same people who did uh, the CDI Zelda games. Yay, Silver Scale! Can't get the gold scale. I never even got it in my regular playthroughs, but whatever. But it was like the whole idea was a king who thinks eating is more important than finding his lost princess. And this guy definitely seems like he would be. And hey, it was a transport to Lake Hylia. Who'd have thought? It's the one and only bottle we can ever get! Something's already inside? No. It, it, it was just toilet paper. It's like the scene in V for Vendetta where the woman wrote her entire life story on a line of toilet paper. I would be able to expand on this if... I ever, if I had watched V for Vendetta within the last five years, which I don't think I have. It's a good movie, though. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't, if it's not obvious immediately when you get it, the bottle inside is a note from Princess Ruto, so you have to go up and show it to her lard ass of a dad. Why are all the dads in this game such terrible people? First Talon and now this one. Ho! Oh, this letter! <laughs> I always like he says, ho. Because it's funny, because I'm immature. Lord Jabu Jabu would never eat Dear Princess Ruto, except he totally did. Ganondorf. Love that. Green around the gills. Well, of course I'll go find her. I mean, you totally just volunteered me. Myself. And now, this. I don't even know what to say to this scene. Two seconds. Not that it's that long, practically speaking, but God, where's your sense of urgency? I had to play the Jeopardy theme song for you. Uh, uh, oh, I'm an idiot. Um, before you go to Jabu Jabu, since you now have an empty glass bottle, you need to put a fish in there. I know what you're thinking. Why didn't he dive? Well, same way. This was just a weird angle. Yeah, you need a fish to offer as, in a sense, a peace offering to Jabu Jabu to let him let you inside. But my question is, I mean, obviously, Jabu Jabu is a Hugh Mongo fish. Do they really think that this one little shrimp is going to is gonna uh, make him want to eat it. It's like a whale eating just one krill. It's never gonna happen. But, Zelda logic. And he totally looks like a giant rock with eyes. Yeah, Jabu Jabu's pretty big, pretty awesome. 
But why do they worship him if he's, for all intents and purposes, stationary? I mean, he doesn't seem to ever move. Oh, whatever. Yes, take this one fish into your giant maw. Surely it will satiate you. Or not. But maybe a little bit of human flesh will. 